Hello, and welcome to this SRC Learning Essentials series video about VPRN route distribution. If you are not familiar with the Service Routing Certification Program, you can learn more by visiting our website at www.networks.nokia.com src. In this video, we will explain how customer route information is propagated across a virtual private routed network to provide connectivity between different customer sites. We will see why PE routers add a route distinguisher and route target to customer routes before advertising them to other remote PE routers. We will then use our lab environment to show how we can verify router propagation across a VPRN on Nokia service routers. VPRN is a layer 3 service that connects multiple sites in a routed domain over a provider managed network. The IP MPLS network of the service provider is invisible to the customer and because of this a VPRN appears as a virtual IP router. The PE router maintains a separate virtual routing and forwarding table for each VPRN service. This table contains the customer's routes for the VPRN. There are several aspects to the distribution of routing information in a VPRN. As we see in this example, CE1 and CE3 first pair with local router PE1 to distribute their routes. In order to isolate the routes received from each customer, PE1 creates separate VRF tables for the blue and red VPRN services. PE1 then distributes the routes to PE2 using the MPBGP protocol. PE2 stores the learned routes in separate VRF tables and finally distributes them to CE2 and CE4. Okay, let's take a closer look at how the customer router CE1 advertises its routes to the provider edge router PE1. First, CE1 pairs with PE1 in order to exchange routing information. PE1 then stores this information in the blue VRF. So essentially we can say that CE1 is pairing with the blue VRF on PE1. This process can happen over static routes or protocols such as RIP, ISIS, OSPF or eBGP. MPBGP is used for PE to PE routing and each VPRN service is assigned a different route distinguisher to distinguish it from other VPRN services. This route distinguisher is added to every VPRN IPv4 route before advertising the routes to other PEs. In the example, RD65000 colon 1 is added to the blue VRF routes and RD65000 colon 2 is added to the red VRF routes. The resulting combination is a VPN IPv4 address that is never the same for two separate VPRNs and therefore a single instance of MPBGP handles route exchange for all VPRN services. So. PE2 receives multiple VPN IPv4 routes from PE1 and then needs to determine which routes belong to which VRF. To resolve this issue, the advertising PE adds a new identifier called route target to each MPBGP update. The route target identifies to the receiving PE the VRF that a VPN IPv4 route is associated with. In our example, PE1 adds the route target 65,000 colon 10 to the MPBGP updates for the blue VRF routes and route target 65,000 colon 20 to the MPBGP updates for the red VRF routes. When PE2 receives these MPBGP updates, it imports routes received with route target 65,000 colon 10 into the blue VRF and routes received with route target 65,000 colon 20 into the red VRF. Finally, 
the VPN routes received at PE2 must be advertised to the local CE routers. To achieve this, a dynamic routing protocol, or a static route, is used on PE2 to propagate the VRF routes as IPv4 routes. Next, we will move to our lab environment. There, VPRN service ID 100 is configured between the PE routers, and each CE has an eBGP session established with the local PE router to advertise customer routes. We will use this setup to track how these customer routes are advertised from CE1 to CE2. Okay, here we are in our lab environment. Let's start by looking at the distribution of CE1's customer routes to PE1. As shown in the diagram, CE1 connects the VPRN100 on PE1 using eBGP. To view this configuration, we can run configure router BGP info. So, from CE1's perspective, PE1 is a normal IPv4 eBGP pair. We also see that an export policy called customer is applied, which is needed to export all customer routes to VPRN 100. Configure router policy options and info allows us to see the configuration of this policy. The policy is accepting from a prefix list called routes which includes the customer addresses. Let's now take a look at the VPRN 100 on PE1. Configure service VPRN 100 info where we can see that CE1 is configured as a normal IPv4 eBGP pair. We can also see an export policy configured called customer. However, it is important to note that this export policy is only needed to advertise routes to CE1. It is not needed to receive routes from CE1. We will talk more about this type of export policy once we get to PE2. Okay, let's run show router 100 BGP neighbor to verify that the session with this CE router is established. So at this point VPRN 100 should be receiving the customer routes from CE1. We can verify this by running show router 100 BGP neighbor 192.168.1.2 received routes and here we can see 10.1.1.0 slash 24 successfully received from CE1 we can also run show router 100 route table to verify that the route was also installed in the local VRF. Alright, next we need to view how the customer route is advertised through VPRN 100 to PE2. MPBGP is used for this and we can view the configuration by running configure router BGP info. Notice PE2 is configured as an iBGP pair, but most important is the addition of the family VPN IPv4 command, which is what enables MPBGP. Remember that MPBGP protocol adds the route distinguisher and route target to every VPRN route before advertising the route to other PEs. We can check this by running show router BGP routes VPN IPv4 10.1.1.0 slash 24 hunt. 
In the Rebout, we see an entry for this route that includes a route distinguisher of 65,100 and a route target of also 65,000 colon 100. Running show router BGP neighbor 10.10.10.2 advertise routes VPN IPv4 shows that the route distinguisher is appended to the route and sent to PE2. Alright, over to PE2 where we can see if the route was successfully received from PE1. Let's run the show router BGP routes VPN IPv4 10.1.1.0 24 hunt again but this time we're going to look in the rib in entries and here we can see the route was successfully received with a route distinguisher of 65,000 colon 100 and a route target of 65,000 colon 100 so using this route target PE2 should now install the customer route into the VRF for VPRN 100. So let's check that by running show router 100 route table. And here we can see the BGP VPN route installed in the VRF. Finally, this route needs to be advertised to CE2. In our case, this can be done using eBGP, however, we will need to include an export policy. Configure Service VPRN 100 Info shows we have an export policy called 2CE2 configured. To view the policy, we can run Show Router Policy. 2CE2. Now remember, PE2 pairs with PE1 using MPBGP, but it pairs with CE2 using normal IPv4 BGP. So this policy simply accepts the BGP VPN routes and forwards them out the normal IPv4 BGP session to CE2. So let's now see if the customer route was successfully advertised to CE2. So show router 100 BGP neighbor 192.168.2.2 advertise routes. And as expected, we see the customer route. Finally, we can head over to CE2 and run show router route table to see that the customer route 10.1.1.0/24 is successfully received all the way from CE1 and that about does it for this video on VPRN route distribution thanks for watching and see you next time content for this video was adapted from the Nokia services architecture course you can access the complete course via any of the three learning formats shown on this page, as well as get remote private access to a service router lab to complete the course lab exercises. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.